Hello to everyone, I am Lorenzo Piccinali and also on behalf of a large number of co-authors, as you can see in this slide, I'm presenting our contribution, which has got a very long title, Designing the Bears Bothius Virtual Reality Training Suite for Improving Spatial Hearing Abilities in Teenage Bilateral Cochlear Implantees. Now let's start by looking at the context of this work. We know that bilateral cochlear implants are offered as a routine for children and research has uh, shown that bilateral implantees, when compared with unilateral ones, are better in language development, spatial listening skills, and speech and noise understanding. At the same time, uh, these skills are still far uh, below those of normal hearing children. And possibly even more importantly, there are no accepted standardized protocols for the fitting uh, or rehabilitation of bilateral cochlear implant users. So considering this context, uh, a new project has started, funded by NIHR and coordinated by Cambridge and the guys St. Thomas's. Uh, we'll see later a bit more about the whole team. That is called BEARS, Both Ears Project. Uh, and uh, BEARS aims at using, exploiting auditory training uh, in order to improve spatial hearing skills, specifically for, uh, for bilateral cochlear implant uh, users. And specifically looking at three areas. The first one is sound sources localization, so the ability of localize a sound source in the surrounding space, also at different distances, for example. Speech in noise perception, so the ability of understanding speech in noise, and uh, but with a specific, fo specific focus also on the spatial um, attributes of the scene, so where, for example, the noise is not located in the same position of the speech sources. And music listening. So this is the BEARS project in general. But what are we going to talk about in this presentation? In this presentation will focus specifically on an action research protocol we have put in place in order to develop our games. Um, or our VR applications. Here you can see two pictures, for example, of a workshop we ran a while ago where we involved uh, directly all the stakeholders and tried to, to design and develop some of these games. So let's talk quickly about action research. Action research uh, seeks to transformative change through the simultaneous process of taking action and doing research. So research with rather than research on people. Now, I am an engineer, and in engineering we often refer to uh, as participatory design. So the idea of designing, attempting to actively involve all the stakeholders. And now this, this term stakeholders in this specific context involves a lot of people because it involves obviously the, the directly involved one, the ones that are directly involved in the development like engineers and developers, but also speech and language therapists, clinicians, music therapists, audiologists, but at the same time also involves teenagers and young adults with the cochlear implants and parents, friends, teachers, people working and living with these people. So all these groups of stakeholders uh, could potentially be involved in the design process and the development process. And the benefit is clearly to, uh, to design and implement applications that are potentially more fit for purpose, more usable and ultimately potentially more successful. So let's have a look at the, the, the cycle, the actual research cycle within the BEARS project and this stage of the development. Well, first we have the item of, of designing and developing applications. Uh, and then stakeholder involvement. Once the applications or a certain stage of an application has been developed, then we, we involve stakeholders through focus groups, surveys, interview, or maybe some people take home the application and play for a certain amount of, of time. After these uh, stakeholder involvement uh, items, then we go into the creation of wish, wish lists that then are translated in user requirements that then dictate further development and so on. So we, we go through this loop of development, involvement, requirements and development again. But it's not as simple, unfortunately. Uh, we have some intermediate steps, for example, from the development to the, the involvement of the stakeholders, we need to produce more caps, or if not available, maybe in very early stage of the development, we need to produce videos or usable prototypes and etc. Then from the stakeholder involvement to the wish list, we need to summarize and itemize the feedback, which often comes in different forms. 
And from the wish list to the development, we need to convert this list of items into requirements for the developers. And then we need to prioritize the development uh, requirements because obviously often you have too many requirements to what you can indeed address. So it is a complicated action, but the concept is this loop of moving from one stage to the other and then going back, which is the key of this type of research. So what are we developing? Now, first thing is that th this project was based on a previous project called 3D TuneIn and based on the tools developed on this project. In specific, we, we are using the 3D TuneIn Toolkit, which is a C++ library for sound specialization and simulation of hearing loss and hearing aid. We're using Music Clarity, which is an application that was created for facilitating music listening for hearing impaired and hearing aid users. And finally, we use a research tool with a value, which is a, an HRTF adaptation game, as you can see here. Uh, it's basically a, a, a shooter game uh, that has been designed for training specialization skills. And what are we aiming to, to create within the Bear Suite? Well, three applications specifically, looking at the three areas that we have outlined before. So sound sources localization training app, then a speech and noise understanding training app, and a spatial music training app. As you can see, all three focus on the spatial element of sound, but on three very specific aspects. Now, uh, I start by giving you some examples, for example, of the process that we have already run so far. This is an example of, uh, of what I mentioned before, going from the development to the user involvement, what kind of information we can share with the end users. And this is an example of a video of our speech and noise training Gamer, um, that we shared in order to gather some feedback. I'll play back just for the few seconds so that you can get an idea. The Bears Project is a series of training games aimed at improving the hearing abilities of children and teenagers with bilateral cochlear implants. The speech and noise game specifically focuses on the ability to recognize speech. The game in its current state involves a cafe scene where you play the role of a counter server. Several customers will be placed in front of you one of which will then ask to make an order. Can I order something, please? You will then be required to identify which of the customers is asking for service. After this... So as you can see, this is a sort of a guide through, a uh, walk through the gameplay that we shared with the end users because we didn't have a prototype already available. But this was enough for them to start understanding what we were planning to do and giving some feedback. Another example of uh, our uh, loop can be made by looking, oh, sorry, he's not moving forward here. Looking at um, a technical uh, question and matter. So we started by uh, delivering this game using head mounted displays. And during the, the process and the evaluations that we run with the stakeholders, we understood that these devices were not suitable for everyone. And specifically for those uh, users that had some balance problems and were not comfortable with virtual reality. And this is a good example because it straight away and in a relatively simple manner uh, directed us to use also another approach. In this case, we use a tablet that doesn't need to be held by a head-mounted display and can be held in front of the user as a window towards the virtual environment. And this simplified a lot the process for those people who had problems uh, with head-mounted display. This is, I think, a good example on how simple things such as this can be picked up early enough in the development process and addressed with. Another example is the scenario. This is unfortunately something that we didn't yet solve because as you can guess, uh, we, are, we are specifically targeting uh, teenage cochlear implant users, but also within this limited population, we have so many possible requirements of scenarios, characters, uh, like um, context. And so it is, it is being very challenging to try to understand what we can implement and what we'll need to implement. Obviously, we don't have the freedom to develop an application for every single person, but at the same time, we can design our applications so that they are highly customizable. And this is exactly what we're doing. And this is exactly another good example of something that we discovered by doing our participatory design stage. And finally, an important item is uh, the audio playback, talking about people with cochlear implants. Are we going to uh, use headphones that go around the cochlear implant and that are connected through a wire to the head mounted display? Or are we going to use wireless connectivity? This is another important question we are trying to understand. And it's not easy because also in this case, many people, uh, many cochlear implant users use both or one or the other 
uh, solution. Therefore, it's not really, in, and there is a, a wide variability of devices that we need to deal with that might not be compatible with certain types of streaming. There is latency in streaming, but at the same time, it is potentially better than relying on headphones, which might have some sort of problems by sitting on the implant. Therefore, this is another example of a challenging situation that we I've identified and we need to deal with. Now, very briefly, looking at the timeline of the project, we are at the beginning at the moment. We are going through this series of prototypes and user involvement between 2021 and 23, and after which we'll go through the clinical trials. So this is a little bit of a picture just to get an idea of where we fit within the project. And finally, I close with this final slide uh, on, the, on some pictures of the team, of the research team involved in this, which as you can see is very wide includes principal investigators, PhD students, postdocs, and etc. So I think this was uh, my, my, my finish, my end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and you'll have time to ask some questions. Thank you.